Okay, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We, uh, we're now in chapter 36 of our Genesis study. In 35 into 35, we see um, Esau and Jacob together once again after they, you know, were separated, they come back together and then Isaac dies. They come and they're together. And now as we move forward, you know, to follow the life of Jacob and then his sons, we uh, stop and Genesis 36 gives us the line of Esau, you know, and what we're going to see here um, is the development of the perennial enemies to Israel to, to the rest of the Tanakh. So very important that we pay close attention to these names and try to cross-reference them and just add in what you know or what you see um, as far as scripture is concerned because you know we want to we want to clearly look at all of the things that are being said here uh in 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 Yahuwah just showing us all of these names all of these chiefs the sons the kingdoms of Edom so we want to look at them and uh get full clarity so um we can do um Let's do about seven verses at a time. Uh, anyone want to read? Take the first seven verses. Some of these names are hard, so don't don't worry about them. Just say what you see. Anyone? Uh, I'll, I'll read. You know, I'll read. Okay, JP. Um, <clears throat> just a, I just want to make sure what you. 36, right? You said the first 10 verses? Uh, you How many verses? Yeah, you the first, first seven or eight. Do the first eight. Okay. Okay. It says, now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Can Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Alan, the Hittite, and Aholai Bama, the daughter of Ana the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite, and Beshemoth, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebajoth, and Adah bare to Esau, Eliphaz, and Beshemoth bare Raul, Reuel, Reuel, and Aholai Bama bare Jewush, and Jalam and Korah. These are the sons of Esau which were born unto him in the land of Canaan. And Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all the persons of his house and his cattle and all his beasts and all his substance, which he had got in the land of Canaan and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. For their riches were more than that they might dwell together in the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus dwell Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. What <clears throat> um, you see there with all these names? Well, you know, I, I think last, you know, I was, like I said, I was reading it through last night, and it was interesting that, you know, we get to, um, I want to say, let me see, 20, it might be like 20. 526. My wife had them down better than me. Uh, okay, 2634. And it says, And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Bere the Hittite, and Bishamath, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. And so I seen that, but she wasn't in the generation. So I said, Well, maybe Judith, the only, the only thing I can say is that she didn't have no babies from Esau. Maybe that was the case, you know. And so, um, so I was just trying to go back on the wives that I, that we had seen in scripture right. and Judith isn't mentioned in there. Um, but she math is, she's mentioned. And then the second time, um, he gets married to, um, another Canaanite, I believe woman. Um, I don't know where that's at right now. I got to look for it, but, and so just kind of going over those those who I seen and not, so I guess that would be the only thing oh yeah here it is in 28 verse 9 
uh, Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau to Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, Bahala, the daughter of Ishmael. And she also was enlisted in this um, list right here. So I don't know. You know, I, I was just pretty interested about that. That's about it, though. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if uh, Rick or Johnny or anyone else uh, has any other information. But when I was looking into that, um, one of the things that I saw was that some of the, you know, women had different names, but it's the same person. Like um, all of the names mentioned would have been the same people, the same women mentioned in uh, Genesis 30, uh, 26 and Genesis 28. Um, uh, but there also could be names mentioned that weren't mentioned before that are new. But uh, anyone want to add anything on to that? Yeah, you know, I'm a lover of the left times, and this is these first eight verses are just crammed full of them. There's 16 of them in those eight verses. And it's basically now. I hear it said out here in this world that uh, yeah, the Esau is uh, the white man, right? Isn't that kind of what their claim is, you know, that he's like, he's not part of the tribes and all that stuff? Right. Okay, well, I just want us to keep that in mind when we're looking at that because this is part of the the line of the chosen people. And these are left tops are very important because they're over every single aspect of Esau and his kingdom, his, his people, you know, his, everybody that's in, involved with him, basically all his women, all his daughters, all, all of his, everything that's speaking, every name here that I see, uh, all is, every one of them is a, is a covenant that Yahuwah has made. He's given to Esau these, all of this great wealth that the, you know, and Esau, his Edom, has, it was said twice there. The very first verse and the eighth verse that you read, it started the same way and it ended the same way. So it's telling us, you know, this is all included in this. So I don't understand how they, they try to disconnect and say, you know, that, that they're like some, some kind of plague or something uh, in, in the realm of like, you know, the Israelites or the people, the Hebrews, where I, I see this as part of the line. This is part of the, the, the chain of the seed that's carrying on, right? A, a, am I right in that assessment? Is that why all of this, all this left top or the covenant signs are on everything that has to do with Esau? Well, I think, I think um, part of it is because Yahuwah did promise um, that Esau would be a great nation as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure... So that's a covenant he made, basically, a covenant agreement he made with him. Right, as far as the chosen line, but definitely uh, not the way um, some of these uh, brothers on the corner are screaming out who Edom is, who Esau is. Um, uh, but, but as far as the names, um, I'm going to go into some of the meanings of these names in a second, but Jadiel raised your hand when you when we were talking about the daughters being different, the names being different. Were well, you want to add something to that? Well, I was just, I was going to focus on how the daughters being uh, different, different nation of a different nation. Um, I'm not sure if it's from chapter 28, but I know it's in a previous chapter where when he married the Canaanite women, Isaac wasn't, he wasn't happy with her. Right. It says that he was displeased. So, he tried to please his father and he married an Ishmaelite woman. So there has to be some type of understanding that the line of Ishmael is more acceptable than Canaanite than the Canaanite uh, line than the Canaanite woman. So like he was showing the difference between an Ishmaelite woman and the Canaanite woman and how um one of the downfalls of Esau's life is, is mixing with other nations. And I think that's one of the, the elements that we, that we need to take from what Esau is doing. He, he's providing a, a, uh, a characteristic of combining himself with 
other nation and try to, to look a certain way by appeasing looking the right way as well. So that's why with the Ishmaelites, and also the Ishmaelites are, are on, on the line of Shem. Right. When you look at the, the genealogy, the Ishmaelites is from the line of Shem, while Canaan is from the line of Ham. So um, you have those two different lines that, that, that are not supposed to mix, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. That kind of leads right right into what I was gonna gonna pull out um, because you brought out the fact that it displeased Isaac and Rebecca, um, and you know because the thought was you know first of all Yah said stay away from him. Secondly, um, they thought that this would lead him away from the Yah of his forefathers. You know their customs, their ways. You know, and I think that it's purposeful that it's mentioned. But remember, this is Esau. Esau is a picture of the flesh, the things that he goes after, the things that he desires. He gave up his birthright for stew. You know, we look at, um, it says uh, in verse one, now these are the generations, the Toledoth, the family history of Esau, who is Edom. Edom means literally red, and that came from Genesis 25, 30 where they likened him, they called him red because of the stew that he sold his birthright for, you know? So he's going after satisfying the flesh. He's going after whatever looks right, or, or like Johnny L just said, appears to be right, you know, appears to be in, in, in a good way versus what Yah says do. Um, and, it's, and it's definitely a picture of the flesh. Um, but let me let me look at verse two and three. I wanted to look at some of these names. Um, verse two says Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. Ada, which means ornament, the daughter of Elon. Elon uh, the Hittite. Elon means tabernacle. Uh, the tabernacle tree is where where we get pistachios from. I found that to be be interesting, the tabernacle tree. So Elon means tabernacle. Elon was a Hittite. Now the Hittites, if we go to um, Second Kings, let me pull it up here. Second Kings chapter seven, looking at, um, So he comes from the line of half, half. Right, it says, um, seven verse six, it says, and this is when the Syrians are fleeing the camp. It says, um, verse seven, therefore they arose, that, speaking of, this is when the Egyptians were attacking the, the Syrians. It says, therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And these uh, lepers came to the outskirts of the camp. They went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold clothing and went and hid. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some. Um, I don't think this is the passage I was looking for. Um, this is not the passage I was looking for. Sorry about that. Let me see. The son of Canaan and probably an Esther of the Hittites. Interesting. A half. First Kings 7. Yeah, I, I have the wrong passage written here, so I apologize for that. But um, we do know that the Hittites, you know, eventually are an enemy of um, Israel. Um, and uh, if we continue on, it says, and Aholabama, Aholabama, her name means my tent is a high place. And she is the daughter of Anah. Anah means to sing. And 
the daughter of Zibion. Zibion, the Hivite, his name means hyena. So his his name means hyena. So I'm going to look for this passage that I was trying to find to uh, bring out the Hittites. But I see Brian and Omeka have, have their uh, hands raised. Omeka, you can go. Shalom, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, to what Rick was saying about uh, when he started talking about Esau and Edom, uh, you know, and uh, being a part of the covenant, you know, one thing we also see is in, uh, I can't find it. I don't know if it was in, uh, I think it may have been in Numbers, but Yahuwah warns the Israelites not to go and take the, you know, to go to war with, with the Edomites because it says they're, it's their, he's, they're their brother and the land that they're in is the land that he gave them. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of this, you know, it's, it's really just tactics of the enemy. Um, you know, anything that is, you know, if you can get out in front of a situation, you know, it's coming and, 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 and apply a false image to it. Then when the truth does come, it's going to make it hard for people to um, want to associate with it because the negative image that has been placed in front of it, you know? So when we look at these um, black Hebrew Israelites who are, you know, constantly on, you know, the street corners and, you know, um, you know, places out in the streets yelling and screaming and this, this and that and saying uh, Esau is the white man, you know, number one, that's a very false statement, which later on, as we read this chapter, I'll prove why it's a false statement. Um, and then number two, overall, the, the gospel message is for everybody, um, you know, and Romans chapter five, I think, is one of the chapters that, you know, clearly specifies that because the sin of Adam, you know, every man from and then, you know, um, you know, basically has sinned, you know, and it, it has received the consequence of Adam's sin, which is death. And so through the righteousness of Yahushua, we all can be redeemed, you know, um, those that descend from Adam. So in general, you know, this, all the talking they do, it's just bad counseling bad teaching bad elders you know who did not understand what the gospel message is all about you know and so this image they have portrayed you know it's very likely that there are some that are you know in covenant with hasatan or in covenant with the enemy and they want to corrupt the image of the israelites that way now when the when the true people are coming forth, those that are converting back to the ways of Yahuwah, you know, whether it be of the bloodline or, or of, you know, the, the other nations, that the, them just saying, oh, you know, this is what I represent. I acknowledge myself as an Israelite. They automatically get connected with the negative image and it shoots people away. And so, you know, it's, it's just uninformed individuals who do not know the complete truth, you know, and so, um, yeah, like I said, it's it's just false doctrine all the way around, and, and we see it, you know, from Yahuwah saying that the Edomites, you know, are your brother, and the land they have is the land that I gave them, and so, you know, I just wanted to add that to, to what you were saying. Yeah, no, well said, man. I think um, I think you're right on point with that. Um, it's a distraction, you know, it's a distraction. And it also brings a false name to those who are truly following him, you know, so we got to be definitely careful of that. So I apologize. So I was in the right chapter. I read the wrong verse. <laughs> so it was verse six and I read verse seven. So speaking of the Hittites now, um, because remember, this, this genealogy is introducing all of the enemies that are against Yah's people. So when we when we looked at Second Kings verse seven, we wanted to be looking at verse six, and it says, "For Yahuwah had caused the army of Syrians to hear the noise of of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army, and they said to one another, Look." The king of Israel has hired against us 
the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. So right here we see the fruition of what I was speaking of earlier. The Hittites are now attacking Yah's people. So apologize. Uh, read the wrong verse. All right. So brother Brian and then brother Don. Yeah, I wanted to make a comment about the Esau being the white man. Um, uh, and it's posed a comment in the question. In Genesis 25, 25, it says Esau is described as being ruddy. When you look it up in the Hebrew, which means, it means, uh, I mean, well, he's described as being red. When you look up the Hebrew, it means ruddy. Uh, and what's interesting is Adam is also described as being ruddy uh, as well. So my question is, like, from my understanding, ready is a person of color. And so is, is that correct? Or is, cause this is, these claim that Esau is the white man. So it's. Yeah, um, ready is a particular type of skin color. It's like a copper brown. It's like a brown, uh, not just, it's not a general, it's a person that you know brown. It's a, it's a specific type of brown. David was also described as ruddy, having a, a, a like a copper tone brown skin. Um, yeah, so it's not necessarily like. And Esau, when he was born, it says that his hair, that his hair was red. There wasn't no emphasis on his skin. It was saying that he was covered with a red hair, like a garment. So that that was what was red. On, on Esau, but they apply it to the skin, you know, which that's not what the skin reveals, you know. Oh, okay, yeah, I was just, I was just wondering about that because yeah, it's interesting to see where, where the uh, lineage goes into as far as like later on. Cause I know Esau mingles himself with different nations and things in a. And things like that. So I was just like, uh, uh, yeah. When people say that, it's like, well, show me the proof of like where did. When I guess in the scripture we'll find out eventually, like where did Esau see or his lineage get into the white man, so to speak. So that's all I want. I just want to make that comment. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Jadiel pulled out the fact that he was that he was ruddy at birth. Um, and that the actual, the Hebrew name Esau actually sounds like the same word for hairy. So he talked about his hair. Esau also means hairy. Um, Edom came from 25 verse 30, chapter 25 verse 30, where he took the stew um, and gave up his birthright. The, the stew was red. So um, just top uh capping on top of what Jadio was saying as well but um brother well, yeah because I, I do understand yeah they they the reason why the, the the those hebrew israelites say that is because it says in scripture that y'all hated esau and loved jacob and so they use that as a point of contention and things like that but so it's it's a uh, uh i don't know i thought i said it in genesis but i know it says that in malachi uh uh yeah malachi chapter one verse three where it says yeah i loved esau i mean i love jacob but hated esau so romans as well it's, it's, interesting. it's interesting that those are left tiles are there according to what rick is saying uh because in scripture it does say that y'all hated esau but it i guess it, it it's when you look at the uh what it means to be an israelite it's basically, I think it's more of an individual basis. It's like, just because you're of a certain line, if you accept Yahuwah, then then you uh, you become a new creature in Yahusha and those old, the old blood, those old things are passed away. So, um, but yeah, that's all, that's all I want to say. But I also think it fits their narrative too, you know, and then the whole idea of the, the hating, you know, simply not paying him him attention or that the things that he does don't represent him jacob did follow him so he loved him go ahead Jack. 
Yeah, and that's also like a lot of times they would reference like a whole group of individuals by their father. You know, just like how when he would address Israel, a lot of times he would call them the Jacob. He would, he would literally call them by the name of their father. So it's not necessarily emphasizing the hatred all the way to to the actual father. He's a the people that stem from his line. And right. especially when it's talking prophetic, so when it's Later on in the Malachi, it talks about the wickedness, like the abundance of wickedness that the, that the uh, Edomites were actually doing at that time. So um, that connects with what Rod was saying about the Hittites. And it, the Hittites were, were doing, like their sins were reaching into heaven. So we see, like what Brian said, that you become a new creature by faith. So we see that one of the most righteous and loyal soldiers was the Hittite. The one that the one that David killed was the Hittite. Uriah was the Hittite. You know, so it, it's like uh he was one of the most loyal and wanted to die with him, with his brothers and he wasn't even an Israelite. Yeah. Those were his brothers because he was he was definitely grabbed in because he was in the he was an army of Israel. So like what Brian said, I see everybody kind of put pieces together. Brian said, any any nation to be grabbed in. When he's addressing Esau, he was particularly talking about the, what that nation as a whole was doing, not the individuals that were choosing to follow God. Right. At the time. There's many different, many different people who did choose from the line of Esau, uh, specifically Caleb, to join Israel. I'm backing up. Yeah, I, I was just getting ready to say, Caleb. Um, but great point, great point. It's the ways in which they carry out their actions, the ways in which they live, those ways are hated. You know, the ways of Jacob, Abraham, Yitzhak are loved by Yah. So let's let's also keep that in mind because those passages are always um and 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 most presently uh, taken out of context as well. So Brother Don and then Joyful uh, songs. Yes, I was uh, uh, about to ask the same question that uh, Brother Brian was asking. Um, was it a bloodline of um, like um, what are their um, mm, albinos, albino babies, and they tried to say they were they were white, but they're albinos. Their bloodline because their skin was whiter. Is they're still from the uh, Hebrews? Is that the same with Esau? Uh, not that I know of. Have you heard of the the albino babies? Not sure about that. I understand what you're saying about albino, but I don't know that the scripture speaks of that in any way about the the color skin being albino or white or washed or any of that kind of tone, you know? Okay. So I don't know that those would connect in any way. I think this white man doctrine is basically something that's been put out there to try to bring division you know okay. in some sense to bring hate that you know hey you who hates white men you know like you guys have been saying it's not the the pe the skin color is the heart of the person you know the what that kind of thing but but as far as this what i'm seeing i don't see that it describes them in any kind of tone like that other than bronze skin in some ways you know so that's that you're still kind of some kind of tone there. I don't know. I don't know if you can call my skin bronze in any way. I don't know. You know? <laughs> but, but yeah, again, I think I think it also fits the narrative of what they're portraying because it's one thing to call the people back to understand who they are, you know, under Yah. It's a whole nother thing to create a narrative where um American slavery, you know, is is the is the Israelites and the white man is Edom and that's who you'll now be taking over. They'll be serving you and you know that whole construct is flawed. So you know, take it like a grain of salt. Praise you uh -huh. Yeah, I think I think you put that uh, understanding putting it out because I've heard that before, and uh, you can't believe any doctrine. Um, you know, like they say the um, the Jews, the Gentiles, and the Hebrews all shall be saved. If you come to Yah and you believe, you know, it's not a color of her skin. But I was just wondering when I heard of, they said Esau was red. I was wondering about 
that came behind. I've heard someone say about the albino baby. So thanks for the understanding. That's yeah. a, that's that's a, that's uh what y'all wants us to do to get the understanding, and that just opened my uh, you know, up. To it. No, I, absolutely. There's a lot of that of brothers or copper stone brothers with red hair. Malcolm X had red hair. He had red hair. Um, he was actually called, his nickname was uh, Detroit Red. Detroit Red. Detroit Red. Huh? Detroit Red. Detroit Red. Right. Right. Because his hair and his beard, his hair was red, but he wasn't a albino. Right. It's just, you know. So, Jadiel, if you, if you, Jadiel, if you. T turn off your video. I think you might come in better. Okay. Let me. Uh, can you got? Can you hear me better? Yeah. Yeah. Ahead. Yeah. Much. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. I was just referencing um, how uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be albino to have red hair because uh, I was I was mentioning how Malcolm X had red hair. Uh, his nickname was Detroit Red, and he had red hair and red and a red beard. Uh, I know a lot of black and white and techno color TVs, they don't show that because you can't really see the color, but Detroit red because his hair was actually red, like a dark red. Um, so, you know, black people can have red hair uh, or color, you know, brown tone. His, he was like a copper tone, brown skin tone also. So it's kind of like, you know, he would fit the description. <laughs> Of what Esau would look like, besides the whole hairy, the fact that Esau was hairy all of, all over his body and his hair was red all over his body. That's why Isaac wanted to touch him to check to see if it was Esau, because yeah. he knew that his skin was that his skin was gonna feel hairy, you know. And then when he felt the goat skin on on Jacob, he said, "Oh yeah, you are my son Esau because you know, not only do you feel hairy, but you smell like the field." So, so yeah, I just wanted to. To make that clear, there's never a there's never an emphasis on Edom being, you know, like like this emphasis that that a lot of people put on skin tone, skin color, you know, because even every every brown skin, you know, copper tone person is not from the line of Shem, right? You know, so it's kind of like the silly to to make a tone a skin tone color a nationality. They they never did that in history, in scripture. They never looked at the skin tone and said what nationality he was. Because other nationalities could have had the same same skin tone. Yeah, I mean, so so what happens is, and, and Jadio is absolutely correct. What happens is, they take truths um, that are facts. They take facts. So so you have the American slave trade, right? And we know, and there's clear evidence that you know these were descendants that came down to the West Bank of Africa. Uh, and they were hidden, you know, their names were hidden, their names were taken away from them. They were stripped down, you know, brought to nothing. They take those facts and they build a narrative on top of that and they try to use scripture to prove it. But <laughs> you have to keep scripture in context and look at what it's saying and not go based upon where your heart turns, you know, because the, 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 the reality is that the African American seeks his identity because the average African American does not know its identity. So when someone comes and they give you an identity, or they give you a genealogy, or they give you a history that sounds correct and may as well may very well be correct, you attach to it, but then they tack on the lies and everything else that comes with it. That's what you have to be careful of. Because there's a thirst and there's a hole to fill it's a prime candidate for the enemy to lead you astray. So that's why we have to be constantly watching for the wiles and schemes of the enemy. Praise you Um Sister Nicole, you can go ahead. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I just wanted to just real quick uh, go back to where they were talking about um, when, the heaven, when the Heavenly Father said, Jacob I loved and Esau have I hated. Um, there is, you know, as we already just talked about, there are so much, uh, there is so much, I should say, um, rhetoric out there about that. And people have taken it and they've twisted it up and taken it out of context grossly. But there is, the, the word that is used, the Hebrew word that is used uh, for hate in that particular place is the same 
word that is used when Messiah is actually talking about um, he that uh, doesn't hate mother, father, children, and yea, even his own self. Um, you know what I'm saying. So it's basically what it means is to love less or to prefer or, or to favor. It has nothing to do with actual uh, intense um, hatred in the sense that we know it in our language. So people have taken that and they've misconstrued it. And like you guys were just saying, they, they preach a hate doctrine. And then they turn around and they mix in a lot of lies with some truth. And, you know, a lot of people, if they allow their egos to be taken in, they, they get deceived. And a lot of it's based on, you know, ego, building up the ego. Well, you're this and you're that, you're the other. And they're basically doing the same things that other groups have done, uh, other racial hatred type groups have done in the past. They're doing the same thing. So that hatred thing, I just wanted to clarify that that's, Yeshua used the word hate, but it wasn't in the context that some of these groups are saying. So I just want to clarify. That was all. Thank you. Praise God. Brother Mecca. Yeah, um, there is, in, I think it's in Second Kings, uh, it may be in First Kings, but there was a situation where um, one of there was a man who was cursed and I can't remember who he was cursed by exactly, but there was a man who was cursed that all his offspring after him would come out white as snow. Um, and I can't remember exactly who that was, but I'm going to try to look for it. Um, but I do know that, um, was it Naaman? That, I think it was Naaman. Maybe uh, it might, it might've been, I can't, I can't remember exactly who it was or who cursed who. Um, but I do remember that it took place in, in somewhere in Kings yeah. um, that it happened. Cool, cool. Um, yeah. Um, you know. That one's another one that's used a lot out of context. I just want to add that in. <laughs> uh, name it. Yeah, a lot of a lot of groups have used that. Uh, racially motivated groups have used that to say that white people were cursed or they returned to white because of this man, and it 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 doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's taken grossly out of of context, and people have fell for it, unfortunately. But yeah, they do use that as well. Absolutely. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, no, I just real quick wanted to say it's like a backwards Mormon idea. Because <laughs> the Mormons teach that we're black because our when we were spirit beings, we didn't believe, so we turned black. We rebelled. And now you have the opposite. Now black groups are teaching that white people were made in labs or that they were cursed or, you know, likewise. Because the Ashkenazi, the Ashkenazi Jews, Teach in the Talmud that when Ham was cursed, his nose became wide and his skin became dark. So it, yeah, it's a, we got to stop the cycle. Like, forget about what they're doing. Let's not reciprocate foolishness. Let's just teach the truth, you know. And, and the truth exactly. is, you know, everything gets revealed, you know, the more we expose the truth. And we don't have to stay claim. Like, there's there is a natural you know, desire, you know, for, all right, I'll use myself as an example. You know, when I trace my bloodline, you know, um, back to Togo, it was very liberating for me within the confines of this human body I have. You know where my family came from, you know, to know that I was from Togo, you know, and to meet you know, other people from Togo and for them to tell me about the land and to, to tell me that there are, there are still villages there where, you know, the Hebrew culture still resides, you know, it was satisfying and even gratifying to me to know that because I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, you know, I know my family goes beyond, you know, Philly. <laughs> I know it goes beyond New York, it goes beyond Georgia, Tennessee, 
you know so to to connect with that understanding is one thing to then take that and create a complete new doctrine based upon people's desire to want to know who they are is from the enemy and i think we have to be very careful as we look to to get these questions answers that they reside in us for them to take us down a false faith a false religion a false understanding and base our faith on scripture on scripture alone so um, there's a difference um and i think we have to pay attention to both like i'm not going to ignore who i am i'm not going to ignore who, who uh i was created to be but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything if i don't follow Torah. it doesn't mean anything if i don't keep his laws statutes and precepts it doesn't mean anything if i don't love my brothers and sisters so you know all of those that followed him followed Torah. all of those no matter what nationality they were it says a great multitude came out of egypt so we have to dispel all of the things that put us in the light of darkness you know i was looking at you know uh, the commandment you know um you know take not the, uh, elohim's name in vain you know and a lot of people look at that and they say okay it means not to curse i mean it could mean not to curse but you're taking the name you're placing it on yourself and you're giving a false representation because you don't live like he tells you to live okay that is taking his name in vain i'm putting his name on me and i'm not living the way i'm supposed to live so those that are not following his laws precepts and, and statutes and judgments and, and commandments they are the ones that are going to lead you down that road and you can always line that up with Torah. when you line it up it's going to sound weird it's going to sound crazy and it's going to sound detestable so always do that brothers and sisters always do that go ahead john praise john praise john i wanted before we move on i just wanted to look at the at what we're doing here um, because in the first 10 verses, um, it's basically describing Esau's family. It's, it's also describing his possessions, and it's describing the family growth. And then they move to Mount Seir, which eventually becomes, like we've been talking about, the land of Edom, which is called the Red Land. So, so let's, let's keep that in mind, because now he's going to go into the same family structure more in depth so um who wants to take the next uh several verses um we can read where we stop in 10. um let's read to verse 20. Uh, we stopped at eight we stopped at eight oh yeah all right, pick up from nine, read to uh, verse 19. Brother Mecca. Okay, uh, who wants to read that? Oh, so, sorry. Um, I was actually trying to wait till verse 31 to read, so. Um, Wait till verse 31. Okay, so there's something specific you have prepared. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <Verse 31. laughs> Praise God. Can't wait. Um, come on, y'all. Somebody take the next uh, 10 verses. Verse 9 to verse 19. Let's get engaged here. All right. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, verse, verse 9 or verse 19. I, okay, so uh, as, and it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, Yah gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass that day. What are you what are you reading, man? Oh, I'm sorry. Um let me uh oh uh, man, I was I was reading okay, let me go back to <laughs> I was in a different book that I was talking about oh let me go okay you <laughs> I did that earlier. Yeah, you gotta take us into a whole new study, man. Yeah, I did that earlier. I was in the right book though, and I read, I think, the verse before, but we, we developed a whole new thing here. But you don't, right, have, to, you don't have to follow your elder, man. 
Yeah, we're, we're in chapter 36, right? Chapter 36, mm -hmm. verse 9, yeah. Okay. Oh, and, uh, okay, and these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's son, Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, um, Ruel, the son of uh, Bashima, uh, Bash yeah, Bashima, the wife of Esau, and the sons of Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zabio, and Gaim, and Kenaz, and Timna was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare to Eliphaz, Amalek. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. And these are the sons of Ruel, Nahaf, and Zarah, Shammah, and uh, Mizah. These were the sons of Bashamah, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Aholibamah, the daughter of Anah, the daughter of Zibion, Esau's wife. And she bare to Esau, uh, Jerush, and, and uh, Jashem, and Korah. These were dukes of the sons of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, Duke Taman, Duke Omar, Duke um, Zebio, Duke Kanaz, Duke Korah, Duke Elam, and Duke Amalek. These are the dukes that came out of Eliphaz, the land of Edom. These were the sons of uh, Adah. And these are the sons of Rule, Esau's son, Duke Nahaf, Duke Zerah, Duke Shammah, Duke Mizah. These are the Dukes that came from rule in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Bashamah, Esau's wife. And these are the sons of Aholabama, Esau's wife, Duke Jush, Duke Jesham, Duke Korah. These are the dukes that that came of Aholabama, the daughter of Anash, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, who is Edom, and these are their dukes. And yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't really see anything interesting here, but we hear this is the first time I heard Duke yeah. in Genesis here, which I'm not really I'm not really sure what that means. Yeah. I haven't had to look at that up, but um, but yeah, I don't really have anything. I know, yeah, it's interesting that yeah, as you read further to trace these names. Yeah, like you always say, uh, Rod, to remember these names because uh, they do come uh, as, as they come up in the future and stuff. But yeah, I don't have anything for now. So. Right, right. I understand, brother. It's, <laughs> some of these names are, are difficult. Um, but Duke uh, will be another name for chief or captain. So these he's naming the captains of the family. So the first eight verses, he tells the family then he goes in deeper and really expands um, from, from verses one to eight. On top of that, from 15 to 19, he really goes in to all these names. So, so the chiefs, again, would be the dukes, the captains of the family. So, but there's one name that, that should stand out to all of us, and that's, and that's um, Amalek, right? So looking at, um, let's look at numbers, because remember, we're talking about the perennial enemies, perennial meaning they're always, not just on the perimeter, but they're always attacking Israel. So Esau's line, the the, the, the family of Esau were men that, that were against Yah's people. Um, in Numbers chapter 14, I'm going to start, I'm going to read several verses here, but I'm going to start in, um, 
verse 39, and this is an invasion attempt on Israel. So verse 39 says, then Moshe told these words to all the children of Israel and the people mourned greatly. And they rose early in the morning and went up to the top of the mountain saying, here we are, and we will go up to the place which Yahuwah had promised, for we have sinned. And Moshe said, now why do you transgress the command of Yahuwah? For this will not succeed. Do not go up lest you be defeated by your enemies. For Yahuwah is not among you. Verse 43, for the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because you have turned away from Yahuwah, and Yahuwah will not be with you. But they presumed to go up to the mountaintop. Nevertheless, neither the, the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah nor Moses departed from the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwelt in the mountains came down and attacked them and drove them back to Hormah. And then in verse uh, chapter 24, verse 20, it says, um, then he looked on Amalek and he took up his oracle and said, Amalek was first among the nations, but shall be last until he perishes. Then he looked on the Canaanites and said, he took up his oracle, firm is your dwelling place and your nest is set in the rock. Nevertheless, Cain shall be burned. How long until Asher carries you away captive? So we see the Amalekites um, say, they. he says here, they're the first of the enemy. So this goes along with what we're, what we're seeing that these are going to be the perennial, perennial enemies of Israel going forward uh, throughout scripture. So um, basically you're seeing the captains of all of, uh, of each, basically they're, they're captains or you can call them tri or captains of the tribes that come from uh, Esau, from Edom. So anything, any, anything else to add there? Anyone? All right, let's move on. Um, let's take the next several verses from verse 20. Uh, let's go to verse 30, verse 20 to verse 30. Uh, I'll take them if no one wants to. All right. These are the sons of Seir, the Horite, who inhabited the land Lotan, Shabal, Zibion, Ana, Deshan, Ezer, and Deshan. So we have a Deshan and a Deshan. Okay. These were the chiefs of the Horites and their sons and the sons of Ser in the land of Edom. And the sons of Lotan were Hori and Hema. Lotan's sister was Tema. These were the sons of Shobel, Alvin, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Anam. These were the sons of Zibion, both Ajah and Anah. This was the Anna who found the water in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of his father Zibion. These were the children of Anna, Deshan, and Ab 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 Ahalabama, the daughter of Anna. These were the sons of Deshan, Hemdan, Eshbat, Ithran, and Sezran. These were the sons of Ezer. Bilhan, Zavah, and Akan. 
These were the sons of Deshan, Uz, and Aram. These were the chiefs of the Horites, Chief Lotan, Chief Shabal, Chief Zibion, Chief Ana, Chief Deshan, Chief Ezer, Chief Deshan. These were the chiefs of the Horites according to the chiefs in the land of Seir. So here we have a further dissection of all of the families. Um, and, and we can also see this recorded in First Chronicles as well. But these are the families and the chiefs. And what, what I found interesting was that there are a couple of women in here who are also dukes, who are also chiefs, who are also captains of the tribes. Um, but that's about it for that particular passage. Anyone see anything else or have any questions? I'm, I'm following along as you're reading these things and I'm seeing like the meanings, I'm putting it up there at the lexicon as you're reading this and the actual meanings of these names that, that you're flowing with. And it's kind of a cool story if you take the time to go back and, and read it in that context. It, it starts to bring a, a kind of another dimension of this, you know, it kind of seems boring when you're saying this is son of this and blah, blah, blah. But if you're actually seeing what the meanings and what they actually are declaring, there's a whole nother story behind the story of this. And then you also see the lineage of who they connect to. Like some of these are, you know, uh, connected to Solomon along the way and, you know, other prominent peoples as we go through. Uh, it's it's kind of, it's laying out a foundation of how things are going to flow. And so there's there's more to the than just naming these things. I remember going through this and it was, you just like skim right across the top of them. Right. You can't pronounce half of them, and you know, I never really took the time to look at the meaning. But as you're doing that, I just wanted to point that out. There was, it was, it was pretty cool to see another side of this, you know, that is kind of hidden if you don't understand the meanings of these names and stuff and the stories that are being told there. And there's actually decorations being made, you know, in these names as well. So, th this is a little thing I thought I'd add in there just to. Maybe add a new, a little more flavor to this. Yeah, you wanna, you wanna um, give us some of the meanings. Let me go back here to the beginning of because uh, I was doing this primarily the ones before, but I'll just kind of start here, um, in where you started twenty, and it says these sons of Cir, which is a mountain range in Edom. And is also the inhabitants of the mountain in Yehuda, the Horite, um, which is uh, the inhabitants of Edom, and is also the name of an Edomite, also the name of a Simonite. And then it goes on into the inhabitants or, you know, the dwelling place is really kind of what that means, of the land of Lothan, and the earth of the son of Seir is really what that's saying in those meanings. And then Shobel the flowing of an Edomite, also the two uh, Israelites, and Zibon is like a, a Hena, as you, I think that's how you said it, a Hena, uh, or a Horite, is that Zibon, and, and then Ana, the two Horites. But there was some sections in here that were making a declaration like, like L is like gold or something to that expect, you know, was the meaning of some of these. And as they were flowing through, it was a really a cool kind of a story. Let me just continue on one more verse so you can see here. It says, then Deshan, which is the two Edomites, and Esher, which is, means treasure, uh, a chief of the Horites, and Deshan, an Edomite again. These are the chiefs, a chief in the sense, I guess, that we would understand a chief, descends from the Horites, the inhabitants of Edom, also the name of an Edomite, also the name of a Simonite the son uh, of Seir, which is a mountain range in Edom. And it's also the uh, uh, mountains in Yehuda, in the land of Edom, which again, we see here is uh, another name for Esau or the, uh, the older son of Isaac. And it's also the territory of this area. So th th just kind of a brief, but there was <laughs> early 
earlier on when you were reading it, it was I was like seeing a, a story within a story as you were reading it together. You know, it was pretty cool to see the meanings kind of expound upon what was being said there. Yeah, Mount Sierra, the Red Land, like we talked about earlier. Um, yeah, yeah the good point. I mean, you know, you know, it's funny, not funny, but I'm looking at um, First Chronicles, and it goes through Ishmael, Keturah, Isaac, um, family of Sierra, Israel, Judah, um, the kings of Edom. So it goes through the same thing, and 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 I just I, I I often use the word, you know, there's a reason why these names are chronicled. You know what I mean? And here in the Book of Chronicles, they're chronicling the names because there's a reason. Yahuwah wants us to know who these people are that are against his people, you know, so, and, you know, like, as we pointed out, some of them, you know, Uriah the Hittite, he was a, he was an honorable man, you know, fighting with the Israelites, you know, so there are people from these lines that come out and are grafted into the bloodline of, of Mashiach. So um, it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish. You turn the to Torah, you are going to see his lovely face. Bottom line. Um, so, you know, as we look at <clears throat> the the Horites, you know, the Melakites, um, these family histories all intermingled with Esau, <laughs> you know, and this is the exact opposite of what Yahuwah wanted him to do. So it continues. Um, we're in verse 31. Um, you know what, I'll, I'll take it. These names are rough. I'm sure people are apprehensive. <laughs> about reading through so we'll finish it out and close this chapter because uh it's like jp says that he wants to read them and, uh, oh, yeah. hold on i thought I, like this I thought I, oh yeah yeah I yeah. Thought I have verse 31. Mecca, yeah we're right where mecca wanted to, wanted us to be oh that's right we, gonna, we don't run rob we don't run from these names man we go straight at it uh, praise yeah okay i was just hey i, I had your back <laughs> mother. i was gonna just put you on my back and run through the run through the rough parts, you know. <laughs> um, but go ahead, brother Mecca. I know this was a, uh, you know, a portion of of the scripture that you've been waiting for with tiptoe anticipation. So, uh, yes, Ray, let them use you. Tell us what you got. I got. It. All right. So it says, and these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Yasharal. And Bela, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Dinaba. And Bela died, and Yobab, the son of Zarak of Botra, reigned in his stead. And Yobab died, and Cushum of the land of Tamanai reigned in his stead. And Cushum died, and Hadad, the son of Badad, who smote the Midian, in the field of Moab reigned in his stead, and the name of his city was Abiyah. And Hadad died, and Samla of Masraka reigned in his stead, and Samla died, and Shaul of Rechabath by the river reigned in his stead, and Shaul died, and Baal. Hanan, the son of Akbor, reigned in his stead. And Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, died. And Hadar reigned in his stead. And the name of his city was Pau. And his woman's name was Mahet Tabal, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. And these are the names of the dukes that came of Esau, according to their families, after their places, by their names, Duke Timna, Duke Ala, 
Alia, Duke Yesse, Duke Olibama, Duke Allah, Duke Pinon, Duke Kanaz, Duke Taman, Duke Maidar, Duke Magdiel, Duke I- Iram. These be the dukes of Edom, according to their inhabitations, in the land of their possessions. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. Hmm. Kanaz. Interesting. Go ahead, brother. All right. So um, just want to make a, a few connections here. So first, the first connection I want to make is in, um, if we go back, this is going to be very important. So we see in verse 13, it says, and these are the sons of Ruel. Now, Ruel was the first, I'm sorry, the second born of Esau, right? Um, it says, uh, Nechat and Zarak, right? And so we're looking over, we see um, that in verse 33, it says, and Bella died, and Yobab, the son of Zarak, of Botra reigned in his stead, right? And so keep this in mind because it's gonna it's gonna come it's gonna all make sense once I once we make all these connections. But a second connection we need to make in the genealogy uh, it says um, in verse eleven this is very important. It says and the sons of Eliaphaz Eliaphaz is the second uh, the firstborn of Esau. It says, and the sons of Eliaphaz were Taman. Um, and so I'm just going to stop right there. The first son of Eliaphaz is Taman. Now, we see, like I said, in verse 30, uh, 33, that Yobab, the son of Zarak, reigned uh, second after, uh, after Bella. And so if we go to the book of Job, Yo, one one. No, we're gonna go to. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry, I have my finger on it. I lost it. If we go to the Book of Job, when we start at first in Job fifteen, Job chapter fifteen. Okay, so we see right here in Job chapter 15 of first one, verse 1, it says, Then answered Eliaphaz the Tamanai and said, Should a wise man utter vain knowledge and fill his belly up with the east wind? So I'm just going to stop right there because in the first section of verse 1, it says, Then, Eli, then answered Eliaphaz the Tamanai. Now what we just read in... Um, Genesis that Taman was the first son of Eliaphaz. So Eliaphaz is the companion of Job, who is um, there to comfort him during his time of mourning after he lost his family. So this this same Jobab that we're reading, um, the same Jobab that we're reading in verse 33 is actually Job of, uh, is actually Job. It's not um, somebody else or different. It's just Job, Jobob. Job is short for Jobob. So these are actually, so Job is actually an Edomite. He's actually from the, the descendancy of Esau. And one of the reasons why I brought that out is because we see, you know, going back to what Rick was, talking about earlier um, there's two things I want to bring out in verse 30 in verse uh, 30 of chapter 30 so Job chapter 30 verse 30 he says uh, Job says my skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat so we see Job give a description of himself here and he says, my skin is black upon me. And this is the same Job 
who is actually an Edomite, claiming that he his skin is black upon him. So we're getting a um, we're getting characteristics, you know, of his features here. So number one, for all this talk of the e the Esau is the white man, Esau is the white man it is I mean it's just you know not true because we see that Job here is mentioning is is, is giving us description of himself and he's saying my skin is black upon me so the whole Esau is the white man number one you know from what I see is false it's a false uh, uh a whole entire just false truth you know and so uh that can automatically you know, should automatically be discarded after reading, you know, something like that. The second thing I wanted to point out was when we go to before verse you get 42. To the second thing, before you get to the second Okay, okay. Thing. Yeah, I appreciate um, what you're pulling out. Because um, us was mentioned earlier. We read us earlier in, in the earlier verses. And... I don't remember where it was, but it's in this chapter. So um, I'm, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. All right. Second point. Okay. Second point. We see here in, in, in chapter 42 of Job. Um, <clears throat> after Job comes to, you know, an understanding of who Yahuwah is, you know, uh, his real strength, his, his, his knowledge, his wisdom. You know, he goes into kind of a level of, you know, understanding and repenting of, you know, things that he would have, you know, said that may have offended Yahuwah. Uh -huh. um, but we see him, we, we see in verse 7 of 42, though, check this out. It says, and it was so that after Yahuwah had spoken these words unto Yobab, I'm sorry, unto Yob, um, Yahuwah said to Eliaphaz the Tamanite, my wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends. For you have spoken of me the things, uh, you have not spoken of me the things that is right, as my servant Yob has. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Yob, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Yob shall pray for you, for I will accept, for, uh, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly in that you have not spoken of me the things which is right, like my servant Yob. And then it says, So Eliaphaz the Tamanite, and Bildad the Shukai, and Sophor the Namathai, went and did according as Yahuwah commanded them. Yahuwah also accepted Yob. And so, uh, and then it says, And Yahuwah turned the captivity of Yob when he prayed for his friends. Also, Yahuwah gave Yob twice as much as he had before. And so we see here that you can say, oh, Yahuwah hates the Edomites. Yahuwah hates Esau. You know, Yaakov, have I loved Esau, have I hated. But even Yahuwah is still telling the Edomites here, listen, go to my servant Job with these things. And go and have him make an atonement for you because you have spoken evil of me or you've spoken things that aren't right of me. So even he is showing mercy here to those that are of the lineage of Esau, the Edomites. And so it's just the whole notion of what they're trying to preach is taken way out of context. And not only do they not only do they have the first half of it wrong, where they're claiming a, a race to be people that technically, you know, according to the lineage we see is not lined up scripturally correct. But then the whole aspect of thinking that the Edomites or Esau, the descendants of Esau do not have, cannot attain salvation is completely just nonsense and bogus. So those are the, the just a the few points I wanted to, to make. No, nah, brother, I, I I I really appreciate that. Um, I'm um, 
I'm definitely edified. I definitely learned something new today. You can't um, bring that kind of wisdom and not have your picture showing, though. Yeah, I knew I knew that um, the Book of Job was a contemporary book of Genesis. I knew that they happened at the same time. Uh, but that's actually the first time I saw that. Um, and you didn't you didn't run shy on your connections. Um, you brought forth Eliphaz, Taman. You know what I mean, the Tamanite. You 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 made it clear. So um, very very good, brother. Very very good. Um, and 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 you had a point. You know, you answered a question pertaining to the Edomites, pertaining to false teachings. Um, so praise job, brother. Good job. Great job. Sister Linda. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Because my my um, t computer has been going in and out. Uh, there's a few verses I, I find very interesting also that will uh, add to what our brother Emeka has just stated, various uh, points that he just made. The first uh, scripture that I think is very important is Deuteronomy 23 and 7. You shall not abhor, despise an Edomite, for he is your brother. You shall not abhor, despise an Egyptian, because you were strangers in his land. So we were commanded not to hate uh, the um, descendants of Esau. Now, secondly, uh, there is a, a prophecy in Obadiah uh, 1, the first chapter, uh, pertaining to uh uh, the Edomites, uh, because of the violence that they committed against uh, Yaakov, the, uh, their brother, and um, stating, well, you can read that later. I don't want to go too much into it, but how they betrayed uh, Yaakov at a, a much later time. Or well, some say that this is a, a prophecy for the end times. But more significant than anything, uh, scripture that resonated in my Ruach as uh, I was listening to you guys, a uh, minister, is uh, Yeshayahu, uh, Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, that I really feel uh, should take some pondering, some meditation from each and every one of us in our spare time. And it says, it's, it's the text states as follows. Who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart and the year of my redeemed is come. And it goes on and on in one more verse. And I looked and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. That, that's, that's actually, um, there's actually a song written by that, um, about that chapter you just read. Uh, I forgot really? the name of the song, but Jadiel's going to light up when I say Corey Red and Precise. Um, do they they actually sing us uh do a it's, it's a hip hop song but they do it based oh, on really? okay. about the return of messiah so wow um yeah no i mean you know you know we spoke you know about how this was the beginning of the enemy against israel but i think we said on several occasions that it doesn't matter about your genealogy. It doesn't matter how you were born, where you are, where you live, who you are, what you look like. When you turn the to Torah, you are his. You know, there's always um, provision made for the stranger that is among the people. And I think that is the most important thing that we have to understand, you know, 
because there are people that have hijacked the name that Yahuwah has given us who follow him. The name has been hijacked. The name has been used, is being used by imposters that aren't following his law, statutes, and commandments, that don't believe in Messiah, you know, that look at a whole race of people and are um, angst against them when scripture teaches otherwise, when scripture commands otherwise, you know, and as we look through the words of what you says to us, you know, thank you again, brother Mecca. Um, I was enlightened by that. Uh, and I didn't, you know, as I looked over this, this morning, I was reading through it this morning. I, I didn't even, I didn't even see that, you know, when I read Jobab, I just, I just, you know, was looking at some other things and I was just looking at the holistic picture of what it was doing. So I appreciate you taking the time to uh, share with us what you, uh, what you saw and, and, and the lengths in which you described and made it clear. So praise Yah. Um, does anyone have anything else to add on brother Rick? I can just see why he was excited about holding off until the 31st. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. But, you know, no problem. What you what you looking like this morning that you don't want to show us your face there, brother? Uh, you know, my uh, I'm not online right now. My my connection is bad. I just I'm through the phone right now, so I can't I can't even turn my camera on. Good seeing you, but anyways, that good enough. You you were able to communicate <laughs> effectively, so that's all that matters. There you yeah. go. Good points. I was enlightened today. This has been a good study. You know, I was kind of like, oh, here we go. We're going into all these names. How fun can this be? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's you know the 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 beauty of the way we do our studies, whether it's Mark, whether it's Acts, whether it's the Sunday morning, sorry, <laughs> the Shabbat morning uh, message. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> the Shabbat morning message um, is that, you know, our goal is to look through the word and go through it verse by verse, you know. And I don't see how you benefit by doing it any other way, you know. Yes, you can pull out topics. Yes, you can pull out ideas, but they have to be dissected properly when expounding on them. And if you're not putting the word in its context, you're doing the world and everyone that hears your voice a, a, a great disservice. And that is the key to not falling into these heretical teachings. That is the key to not falling into these, you know, false doctrines and cults. Um, is to take the word for what it is and understand it verse by verse. So praise y'all for this study. Um, and uh, this concludes our Genesis 36 study. Shabbat shalom.